Good morning and welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Holmes. And I'm Tom Webster. And today we've got something a little bit different for you. So I know obviously usually we've had guests on. I've been on as a guest myself. And today our guest <laughs> is your very own co-host. Tom. Hey, and it's not just because we didn't have anybody. <laughs> it's like no, no. no one wants to do the show anymore. So we're just Yeah, we're just, yeah, we put everyone YouTube off. Chatter. We put everyone off. Yeah, well, so we, we sort of um like dropped a bit of a hint, didn't we, in a couple of episodes ago about the Airbnb that I did and some of the lessons that I learned. So mm. we'll go through I've written down the top ten lessons and then I've written a bonus one at the end. And the the bonus one is like literally the worst thing that can happen for an Airbnb for the first guest first night ever. your first ever, ever yes, guest my first, your first guest ever night my first his first ever night i had literally the worst thing happen that could ever happen oh actually I, do you know what I, I completely forgotten about another one i've got another bonus for you and this isn't me Write just acting down. this out genuinely just thought of another horrific thing that happened so you, you keep talking let me write this one down so what we're going to do guys is this is all going to be around airbnb today obviously um, you know, serviced accommodation is the other word for it, uh, holiday lets. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are trying to get into that either via rent to rent, which is where you would rent the property from a landlord uh, who owns the property. And then you would, you know, pay them a monthly rent, put it on Airbnb and try and make a margin after all of your, your rental and cleaning costs. So, you know, there are some people that are doing that with just a few in their portfolio. And there are some people that are doing that with hundreds in their portfolio and making a lot of cash what tom's done is tom had a property that he owned okay and he decided to utilize that strategy um so he just had the one but even from that one he got some really really good lessons out of it by the sounds of it and hopefully you guys can take on board some of the experiences he's had <laughs> well, make a decision of, as to whether you want to do airbnb or not yeah well, it, it's one of those things like the good thing about property is there's so many different strategies. <laughs> so you haven't got to pigeonhole yourself for one, but I really like the idea of service accommodation. I like the idea of hosting. Uh, obviously we're, we, we live on the coast, so we've got the tourist trap in Eastbourne. Uh, the house that I bought, I bought it specifically for this purpose. So when, when, I, when I bought it, it's, it's literally one road away from the seafront. It's a short walk into town, location, 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 all that sort of stuff was absolutely spot on. Um, but then by the end of the end of the journey, I'm like, no, nah, I'm done. <laughs> but, but I was like, right, I, I, there's plenty of lessons in here of reasons why. But for me, it just is, it wasn't my business. It wasn't my strategy. I think it will suit somebody more that's sort of into like hotels and, and enjoys that world. Um, it's not passive. There is nothing passive income about Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't an Airbnb advert, but it does work for a lot of people. And the, the, the upside was I did earn a lot more money doing this than I would have done renting. So if we use some figures, so I bought the house for 205. Um, I probably spent about 15 on renovating it. It was really like, dated. It wasn't, it wasn't like falling down or anything. It was just really like dated. new kitchen, new bathroom, new floors, new walls, new blah, blah, blah. Um, then when I sold it, I sold it for two, four, five. So it wasn't the best purchase, uh, renovate and sell, but it was good enough. I only owned it for 18 months, two years. So not, not a bad return for, for a little bit of work. Um, but on the rental side, if I would have rented this house, I probably would have got anywhere between 950 and maybe push a thousand, but 950 is probably a reasonable amount. And then in my best month, Airbnb, obviously this year wasn't, uh, 2020 wasn't a great year for Airbnb anyway, because of the whole COVID thing. Um, but when it was rocking and rolling, my best month, I think I turned over 2,200. So it's more, almost double. So I think you can look at well, the way that we did, it, I was pretty much doubling what I would have got rental, but then you have got to put a lot of work into that. Um, but yeah, no, so I got some. And you'd have things like cleaning costs and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, as well. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just revenue. Cool. Okay. So tip number one then. Well, before we do tip number Tom's one. Tom's top 10 tips. <laughs> da, 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 da. Before we do that, let's do some shameless plug-in. <laughs> so you can obviously follow us on all the socials, our podcast you love property. A plug. I do love a plug. Um, and But the big one for us is if you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, or YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, that does mean a lot to us and it does really help push the show forward, get some more listeners, which means we can just keep getting better and better guests. Not quite as good as the guests we've got on right now, but we might be able to... I mean, I get an equal par. 
<laughs> okay, so number one, so some of these tips are are going to be obvious, but um, but some of them aren't particularly obvious. So there's a, there's a mixed bag. I didn't want to like ignore some of the things that are really really obvious just for the sake of it. But the first one isn't particularly obvious. What I didn't think was but how much people love to bake. People love baking. The amount of people that would send me a message before they booked an Airbnb saying, "Have you got a mixing bowl? Have you got a baking tray? Have you got?" I'm like, seriously. Yeah, seriously. I was like, well, I'm going to buy some. So when, as I went and bought a load of baking stuff, and then obviously all of a sudden people were going, oh, have you got this? You got that? I'm like, yeah. As there must be like some sort of great British bake-off effect. But, but Oh, but it, that's interesting. Yeah, and I think like, people go away and they're looking obviously just to, I don't know, do stuff when they're indoors. Do a Mary Berry. Yeah. So people love to bake. So go out, buy some baking equipment. I've, done, I've never baked, so, <laughs> so I was the worst person to do it. But like, yeah, mixing bowls and those special baking trays with the little muffin things and, and some bits and bobs and then advertise the fact that you've got all the baking equipment and it, yeah, that works. Seriously, and then you put that on your advert? Yeah. How many, so how many people would, would message you that? I, I, like, I'm not saying like everybody, but I'm saying it was a surprising amount. So more, more, yeah. I, I, yeah so it was, it was one of those things that I didn't think anybody would ask me about baking. And it was like, Another person's asked me about baking and another person. So I don't know the number, but I just know it was, it stuck in my it mind. Was a, it was enough thing. for you to go and a, buy yeah. the stuff to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Tip number two. Tip number two. People break a lot of glasses. <laughs> Pretty much everyone. I'd go as far as to say, I don't think anyone spent time in that house without breaking at least one glass. <laughs> Again, it just it shocked me. Like when you live at home, I'll probably what you break one glass a year, maybe. <laughs> but it's, all of a sudden, if you're in a service accommodation, I don't know whether they're like juggling with them, but people break <laughs> a people break a serious amount of glasses. That that, or you had a really clever but clumsy cleaner. Blaming yes. it, blaming it all on the guests. <laughs> yeah, blaming it all on the guests. Yeah, I was cleaning this glass and it just smashed the pieces. So, the, so what, what, so the, what would you what would you suggest to combat them then? Did if you I yeah, if I was to go back to plastic glasses, I'd, I'd I would treat it almost a bit like a pub type scenario. And the people are probably more or less likely. No one stole any glasses or, or, that I was aware, but I'd imagine some people have probably experienced that in the past. But I'd imagine people are less likely to steal or smash plastic glasses. <laughs> it's not you're not going to get that high end sort of people feeling that they're at home, sort of feeling. But at the end of the day, as long as they can drink. And, and that with the glasses as well is make sure you have the full range so people did ask about champagne flutes people would ask about pint glasses all that sort of thing so so unfortunately i had all that tumblers um bits of bob so i'd say go and get some plastic i can't think what it, like those special sort of plastic stuff um but get the range get the champagne flutes the, the tumblers did you did you glasses. go for the plastic that is like it's obviously no, I still, I had no glass. Or was it quite I, I, nice, I was but it was just toughened, toughened. No, I, I still had glass. So you still had glass. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> I, I'll just take it off the £2,000 above revenue. More yeah, glasses. That's, yeah, that's where I looked at it. But yeah, no, I've, I, yeah, but if I, again, if I was to go back and do it again and buy everything from scratch, if, if, if I'm starting again, I would go plastic. Um, cool. But get the good ones, I'd say, just so you get that. Yeah, I, I would suggest, obviously, like, and I'm I'm talking from a point of view as a guest because I've never run an Airbnb. But if they looked and felt like cheap, like kids' party plastic type yeah, stuff, yeah, it, yeah. it probably wouldn't be great. But yeah, yeah, I get where you're coming from. Like if it's some sort of toughened, or even you know you can get stuff made out of bamboo and stuff like that now. Like we've got that's a good couple idea. of yeah. cups at home that are I didn't even realize I thought they were plastic, yeah. um, but actually they're bamboo. And that's and, a great idea. And, yeah, it plays into that eco sort of play as well. So we we've got bamboo yeah. stuff for the van um and that's that yeah they're class bamboo plates bamboo everything i said i even looked into how do you invest in bamboo farms bamboo is the future yeah literally anything you do with plastic you're doing with bamboo now like then i like cotton buds bamboo yeah you don't need plastic plastic's done plastic's so 1999 (laughs) (laughs) so in terms of like what you would kit the place out with so you've spoken about baking stuff you've spoken about glasses like pint glasses champagne glasses all of that sort of stuff but how many how many was your airbnb um able to take so how many of everything would you have yeah so um so the actual house itself was a terraced house just your traditional two up two down type scenario um two double bedrooms but the second bedroom was it can fit a double bed i mean you wouldn't have a double bed in there 
Uh, yeah. so, 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 so what I did is I had a double bed in the main bedroom, probably could have got away with one a slightly bit bigger, but I, I was thinking about sort of the vid, uh, the pictures and stuff. I wanted to make it look like a spacious room, um, doing the whole trick from the new build, you know, where they put in like the, the super small sofas and all that sort of stuff <laughs> to make the rooms. Look yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the second bedroom had bunk beds in, um, okay. I, pro- I probably wouldn't have done, probably wouldn't do that moving forward. So having families you you increase that risk of stuff going wrong uh like like again things getting broken marks on the wall all that sort of stuff i think people when they've got airbnb they let the kids run feral some of them so (laughs) (laughs) i'll probably avoid the 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 family stuff but the but and also (laughs) whoever designed the ikea bunk bed that i made i want to kill them I, I gen, genuinely, I, I honestly, and I'm really like, without like tooting my own horn, I'm very good at IKEA. I enjoy buildings like. You're an IKEA chair. puzzle master. Usually. I love it. I absolutely love it. That bunk bed, I swear to God, <laughs> I was, and, and then because I was had to build it in the space that it fit, because the room was a bit of an odd shape with like a, um, what do you call it? Not a, fi- it has a fireplace, but doesn't have a fireplace in it. So just like the alcove. Yeah. And so yeah. I had to sort of fit it in, but then I had to build it within itself. So yeah. I've got no yeah. reach and I did it on my own. It's definitely a two man job. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then when I took it down, it took, it took just as long to take it down as it did to build it, which really? doesn't happen in furniture. Everything comes yeah. down easy and it goes up that it took ages. Uh, but yeah, so furniture, so I, so I could look after four people, uh, but if I would have had a sofa bed, you probably could have got away with six, but yeah, the house was pretty small. It would have been pretty Tight for six people. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of like cups, glasses, all that, just four of everything or more or less? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I had four large plates, four small plates, loads of different glasses. Uh like luckily that the, the kitchen again was a relatively small kitchen, but had everything in it, dishwasher, washer dryer, large fridge freezer. So I had enough for a family to be able to live. Do everything. And and if you were doing it again, talking about the furniture, obviously I, I went and had a look and I thought it was fantastically done kind of design wise. It was very, you know, um, modern and cool and all of that. It was a really nice place because obviously we, we had a meeting there once, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, just, I don't even know when that oh, was. That was, That's long, how, yeah. like, that was a long time ago. And like, obviously we've lost a year and I don't know where we are. Um, but would you pay someone in terms of furniture? Would you pay someone next time to kind of kit? If you were going to do Airbnb again, knowing what you know now would you just order all the stuff and have someone go and set it up for you would you pay an external agency i guess is my question yeah, to it, dress that property for you potentially depending on the game plan so with this one because i was going to hold on to it for a long that my plan was to hold on to it forever really uh, i look I, I was thinking well i'm going to buy the furniture because over time i'm going to break even at some point yeah what I'd actually done, weirdly enough, is the the flat that I'd sold to buy this one, I I'd lived in the other flat, and and then I moved into uh, where I'd gone, I'd gone to my mate's house. He's got like a uh, what do you call it, like a summer house, like a big like like a like a cabin. Is that what it is? It's a cabin in his garden. So I lived in the cabin, which was fully furnished, and so because because i was going to do the whole just keep buying stuff but not really own my own place and and and, and build up from there yeah. and and then uh what i did when i sold the flat i actually sold all the furniture and all the tvs and everything in it so i did the viewing and when, as we were walking around I was, he was like chatting and blah 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 so, so what are you buying it for and he's like oh um just a holiday home i was like, oh do you like the furniture he's like no i really do actually like, oh do you want to buy it <laughs> So what Honestly. I did, so 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 when I when I bought the house, I had absolutely nothing because I'd sold everything. <laughs> yeah, because I thought yeah. well, I've, I'm, I'm going from a, a, a large flat to a small house. I, it's not going to fit. So let's start from yeah. scratch. But I think depending on what your strategy is, it, yes, potentially I would do the the lease the furniture stuff, especially if it, like, if things go wrong, things get broken, all that sort of stuff. You can you can get it swapped. Um, but but the, but. I think for holding on for a very long time, I probably would keep buying it. But then I also bought a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace and all those sort of things. So I kept it relatively mm-hmm. cost effective. You'll be, you'll be surprised. Uh, again, most people will know, but anything you want to buy is out there on second hand. And if, you, and if you're yeah. not buying it for yourself, 
the, the, the fact that you're buying a secondhand sofa for an Airbnb doesn't really make any difference whatsoever because after about five, six different guests have sat on it, who cares that it's been owned by another person before? So I definitely yeah. recommend either looking, getting a bit frugal with it and looking on your Facebook um, marketplaces, your, uh, what do you call it? God, my brain's dead this morning. eBay. eBay, all that sort of stuff. Or do the, or like I said, do the leasing stuff. So in terms, in terms of leasing, for those of you that are listening, um, the the same applies to a, a, an Airbnb or service accommodation as does like a, an HMO. So if you are going to buy the furniture, um, obviously that can that can add up to a few thousand pounds if you did want to buy new and you did want to buy nice stuff. Um, but there are companies out there, um, and if you want to know some of them, just you know make some comments um, and we'll, we'll answer those or send us a message. We can put you in touch with them. I've used them before for my own HMOs. And what you can do is you can lease the furniture. So like you would lease a car or like you would pay for your phone on a, on a um, contract monthly, you can do the same with furniture. So it can massively reduce your upfront outlay. So if it's going to cost you four or 5,000 to furnish a house, it might cost you a couple of hundred quid to set the contract up. And then you pay uh, 100, 150, whatever it is, Per month, and it usually depends on on whether you're a new business or already established, what the interest rate is at the time, how much you borrow, as to how much you're going to be paying a month, and then at the end of it, you'll you'll own the furniture. And, um, and, and if, if you're if you're doing a few, so if, if your strategy is to to keep buying more and more and more, so mm. so I didn't know about the leasing when I very first bought the house, but if if let's say I'd gone back and my plan at that time was to buy another one and another one and another one then yeah, I think the leasing, because you can write it into your business model that X is Y of cost versus income. And then and then you've also got that ease of just saying, right, this is a two bed house, fill it, rather than you going out, go and do the Facebook market, uh, marketplace, blah, 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 and, and ferrying to and fro, getting deliveries and all that sort of stuff, just have it all done. If you're looking yeah. for that, if you if you're looking for that frictionless, get it done. That's yeah, I'd, I'd recommend yeah. it too. And and I would say the other thing is if you are trying to get into property with a limited amount of funds, um, let's say I'm going to make this up now, but let's say you've got twenty five thousand, right, and your usual setup costs are five thousand per Airbnb that you're going to do on a rent to rent basis rather than like Tom did and own it, or you can get five before you run out of money, right. Well, if, if half of those costs are um, furnishings and you're able to lease them instead, well, now it's two and a half thousand to set up every time and you can get 10 of them with your money. So in terms of leverage, it's very good for leveraging and, and, and getting more. But what the, the numbers I've just said, I've literally just made up, but it's the concept and what, I, what I'm yeah. getting at to, to outlay less cash up front so you can do more deals if you're looking at a rent to rent type yep. of um airbnb or service accommodation what, while we're on this subject is it was a couple further down my list but we'll tick it off now is i've got i've actually got one for soft furnishings um and the reason the reason i wrote it down is that i'm i'm relatively minimalist so i quite like not a lot of clutter and and just basic sort of things in where they need to be and more functional but Pete, but most people aren't. So when I when I did it, it was dining room table, sofa, bed. It was very nice, clean. You walked in, it felt spacious. And quite a lot of people will comment about and, and they'll do it in sort of they wouldn't put it in the review. They would send me a private message and say, Oh, just to know, it would have been quite nice if. And quite a lot of people were saying if there was more soft furnishings and stuff like that. So I went and bought a load of like fake plants and bits and bobs. And I think from, from what I learned there is that people want to feel like they're at home, oddly. So, so when you go to a hotel, like I'm, I'm not really like that. I don't really want to feel like I'm in a home away from home. I want to feel like I've gone somewhere. I want to be at home for being at home and I want to be, but you've got to try and put yourself in the, the mind of your guests. Yeah. And I think, I think going back, if I would have spent more time just putting little trinkety bits around, cause I'm, I, I hate them. If I'm, if I'm completely honest, like little things <laughs> is not me, but I think a lot of people are. So treat yeah dressing like, the property you're talking dressing about dressing like home. the property yeah. yeah and i think with airbnb because a lot of people do just rent their own home out so yeah. i think a lot of guests or people that use airbnb a lot they like the idea of living in somebody else's home for a little bit i don't know rightly or wrongly or weirdly or not weirdly but i think feeling like they were in a home that's probably one of the things that i missed and yeah. and and if i was to do it again i would do better i think i, I agree with that because I'm, I'm quite minimalist as well, but actually 
for probably the past few years now, if I'm going anywhere, I'll always favor an Airbnb over a hotel. Yeah. Because I like the homely comfort of, yeah. you know, my own space, uh, you know, where, where you can tick the Airbnb where it's have the entire place to yourself. Yep. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And going yeah, in yeah, and yeah. feeling nice being in there and feeling comfortable and feeling relaxed. You know, you can just switch off and, and that's your safe space for wherever you travel for business or holiday or, or whatever. I, I usually, well, yeah, pretty much always I, I'll look on Airbnb first before, yeah. before I do a hotel. Yeah. Even, yeah, even if I go abroad now, I'll do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. And, and that's the thing as well is sometimes it's not always what your own taste is. It's what is the taste going to be of the majority of people that exactly are look that. to stay at your, your yeah. place. Yeah, definitely. You've got to take that mindset of it's not your house. It's not your style. You've got to think bigger. You've got to think more mainstream and what the majority of people are going to want. Cool. Wait. Cool. Right, so we're going to the next one. So this next one is very obvious. It's probably the most obvious one. So that's why I didn't write it at the beginning because most people have just switched off going, on. Oh, this is an obvious list. <laughs> <laughs> is cleanliness is the golden nugget. Like being having a clean place is the number one thing. So making sure that all the reviews say the cleanliness, the it was spotless, it was immaculate for two reasons. One is that's just what people want. They don't want to go into a dirty place. That That's a given. But secondly, I think if it's clean when someone gets there, they're more likely to leave it clean when they leave. Do you know, like I think you're just from a psychological point of view, if you work walk into a place that's a little bit grubby, it's a little bit dated, you don't care as much because you feel well if they don't care i'm not going to care so there's that element of give and take have a really good cleaner obviously i, I didn't really have a particularly good cleaner if i must be honest i have a bloody nightmare <laughs> which might be part of the reason why i don't want to do it anymore <laughs> but but again have a very good trustworthy cleaner um that does the job properly and doesn't argue every time you give them some feedback <laughs> so go on then go in go into that a little bit more oh, then. so so I had a couple of couple of little scenarios. So like one person went in and said, "Oh, the the blinds are quite dusty." So I fed it back, and it's like, "Well, no, she cleans the blinds every week." Um, well, she obviously doesn't, does she? I was, I wouldn't have said it. Like the, the the guest isn't making it up. Or the other one is that the bed that I had was it was like a metal frame. So spent like a like it looked quite cool actually, but it was empty underneath. So it was just like a black metal frame, yeah. and you could see under the bed. But obviously, under the bed over time builds up dust. So it was like, oh, can you make sure? Because because what I had like a, it was a cleaner from an agency sort of thing. So I'd speak to the agency, and then they would then argue that the cleaner was doing what I'm telling them they're not. So so I would then say, oh, I've, yeah. I've had a couple of people moan about there's dust under the bed. No, she cleans under the bed every week. Well, well then she's not doing a very good job of it. <laughs> Either she's then, not, or she's oh, not doing oh, it right. Oh my God, like, and it was one of the things, because I got to the point because I because I was cleaning it for a while, and then my mum was cleaning it for a while. Then I got a cleaner in. But when I got the cleaner in, it was pre-COVID when I was just about to think about selling it. Um, and then it just took, honestly, the completion took forever. I think it was like an eight month from accepting the offer to it completing. So I had the Airbnb far <laughs> longer than I anticipated I was going to have it. For. Yeah. And um, and it was always that better the devil you know. So I'm thinking in my head, well, it's only another couple of weeks. It's only another month, whatever. Yeah. And then it kept rolling and rolling. And I would have got rid of her far, far sooner. So so having a good <laughs> good cleaner should be at your top priority list. And one that doesn't argue every time that you give them some sort of feedback. <laughs> you told me something quite funny about a tap. Oh, God, yeah. So I've got these beautiful black taps. And they were like probably quite expensive for the house. Like I had this style of the, the bathroom. And again, the bathroom was the, was the, was the nuts. It was like the, the nicest yeah. bathroom. By the um, way, just to jump in there, is there anywhere that anyone can see photos of this place? Did you do any photos yeah. anyway? You've got them on your Facebook? I'll tell you what I can do is I can do a, when we post the podcast episode, I can put some pictures of the Airbnb up with the post. Yeah. And like then, like and when it, you had them on. Yeah. The, so if you go, so if you check, so, so if you're listening to this show, if you go on Instagram and go on Facebook, I'll put them there. So you can kind of get in your mind's eye. You can have a good idea of what the place looked like. But yeah, so we had these beautiful black taps. And obviously what, whatever she was cleaning them with was too harsh a chemical because the black started wearing off. So I've then said, yeah, can you just be a bit more careful with the taps because the black's starting to come off? So it was like was, this nice matte black, wasn't it? Yeah. Very high-end and, black taps. And, and yeah. like you see in showers now, white with like the black matte frames and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, and she's like, well, no, because the stuff we use doesn't do that. So it must be the guests. Yeah. 
Well, it's obviously not because <laughs> the guest is turning it off and on, off and on, and you're the one scrubbing it. <laughs> oh, because I, I saw these taps, and when you showed me, my, my soul died a little bit because oh, they looked was very horrible. nice, they looked very expensive, and then they just looked like a six year old had scratched the shit out of them. It was just heartbreaking. It really yeah. was. So I feel yeah. for you on that one. Yeah, so that's that one. So, yeah, so clean list of the gold nuggets. So, more people when they give reviews will mention how clean it is so that's that's like key like don't let that one slide i think that's like i said that's a really obvious one we all know that your place should be clean but i wanted to put it in here because i need to stress it that it it is vital like you can't get away with it there were there was like i said there was a couple of scenarios where the cleaner hadn't done a particularly good job and i found out about it instantly you know it wasn't one that just would let people wouldn't don't let it slide so so be hot on that one um yeah. next up again while we're talking about obvious we'll stick to we'll stick to the obvious uh <laughs> theme is comfy bed is literally i'd probably say about 80 percent of the reviews would mention how comfortable the bed was so so again that just shows how important it was and i, and I had a couple of people when i said oh how was your first night you know also the messaging and keeping up to date with people everyone would be like oh the bed was amazing I had one of the best night's sleep i've ever had that, that's one of, when we all go to hotels, the first thing we notice is how good the, or bad the bed is. And I've been to hotels that have had like luxurious beds and I've been to hotels where you are sleeping on a park bench and you know it straight <laughs> away. So, and, well, and, I, and, I agree with that. It's the first thing you do when you go into a hotel room or you go bed. into the Airbnb room, drop your bag and I just kind of like flop backwards on the bed and it's like, you know whether you're going to enjoy the bed or not yeah. like instantly. And you're right, when you get into a bed that's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Instantly happier. Yeah. That's place you've chosen. So I moved, I moved into my girl, like with my girlfriend. So that's where I live now. And we've been here for about a year. And um, and her mattress was like solid. And it got to the point where I was like, Em, seriously, my back is killing me. We're going to have to do something about this bed. And she's like, well, no, it's like a special like bed. Like they said, like it's good for your back. I was like, well, I've never woken up with a bad back and now I'm waking up with a bad back. <laughs> so we bought one of those mattress toppers. Now like the foam yeah. mattress, because because I'm not a massive fan of memory foam because you sort of make a hole for yourself. You know, like, roll out and roll back in the hole. But these these toppers, so again, so let's say that you, you've you decided to go on Airbnb, you've already got a bed and it's not particularly comfortable, just a hundred pound or whatever it is on one of these mattress toppers. That's some of the best money you, you can spend, I think. And, very... and when you say mattress topper, how how I, I can see you doing this. How how thick are they? And like probably what what, what is the top mate? Is it foam? Because yeah, it's just like a memory, like like memory foam. All sorts of stuff. Oh, what am I doing? I'm probably doing what an inch there. Yeah, about, that's about ten inches, isn't it? I think <laughs> 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 so. Probably about an, an inchish thick. Um, but that's all memory foam. But the reason why that's better than a whole memory foam mattress is that you're not creating this hole that you do. You're not sinking with. into yeah, it. Yeah, you're not sinking into the whole bed. You're just sinking into the top bit and just take some of the edge off of a hard bed. Um, okay. But yeah, so, so again, a very obvious one, but one that I just wanted to reiterate that a comfy bed was probably the most... So you've got cleanliness and comfy bed are the two things that would always come up. Um, so, so, so pay attention to that. The mattress that I bought, just to give some advice, is there's a website called... Uh, I think it's called Time for Bed or Time for Sleep with a four. Um, relatively cheap beds relatively cheap mattresses i think i only spent about three four hundred quid on it you know it wasn't like a, a real super duper mattress but they are just really comfortable like the what do you call them the coil spring where they're all in yeah. the pockets and all that sort of stuff and it, and it had a it had a memory foam top in the mattress but again i think i only spent about three four hundred quid so it's not like busting the bank stuff um i'd but, say i'd say pillows are important as well yeah. some people like one pillow some people like two yeah some people like thin pillows soft, some people like yeah. thick pillows yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a conversation this is this is riveting stuff if riveting anyone's stuff. still listening wake up <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like this is different this is a different episode yeah but the thing is what i like about it is it's not the most you know riveting episode we're gonna ever do but <laughs> it's still you know it's mistakes that you've made yeah things that you've learned that have cost you time or money yeah that might not have to cost someone else listening. You know? And and, the, and another thing, this is all like the real stuff because I'm not trying to sell you an Airbnb course. You know, I'm not trying to tell you like that Airbnb. Is Four, like, nine, nine. Yeah, seven. that's it. Yeah. You go and sign up on the website and you're going to make a million pound in a year. Like this is like, this is genuinely what happened when I did an Airbnb. Yeah. Um, right. And the thing what, is your, your issues that you're having now, you had with one Airbnb. So if you have, 
if your aim is to have 25 Airbnbs, yeah. you're going to have 25 times these issues. So you would eventually get into the fact where you're going to need systems, you're going to need team, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, Tom, Tom's at a stage where he had enough doing it, just having the one. But but the good thing is Tom knows that Airbnb service accommodation is, is not his bag. It's not for him. Um, I made that decision as well. So all of my stuff is, is single buy to lets or HMO. And I have absolutely no intention of going into Airbnb and service accommodation because for me, I'm at a stage where it's not, it doesn't have to be about the money. I don't have to make that extra 500 or 600 or a thousand pounds a month. Yeah. For me, it's all about my time and, and ease. And I will take more time, more ease over more money now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so for you guys listening, definitely have a think about that because if you can put systems in place and grow the business that way, great. Um, I think what we should try and do as well, Tom, is get someone on who does Airbnb and service accommodation on a larger scale and see yeah, how they're definitely. dealing with the, the scale up of the problems and, and, and how busy they are and all yeah. of that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, I might consider Airbnb or service accommodation, but the only way I'd do it is with a rent to renter. Yeah. So they're going to take it. We'll do some sort of deal where I will make a little bit more than I would if I did it on a buy sled, but it will be totally out of my hands and I won't have to worry about it, you know? Yeah. So it's really, really important for you guys listening. If you're thinking of getting into it, People are telling you it's super easy. Well, you've got someone here that has only done one and it really put them off. It, yeah, one in a great location and that, that did well. So, so I'm not talking from it from a point of view that it failed. It did really, really well. Like it went as well as it could, but I still got to the end of it and said, this isn't for me and these are the reasons why. So so I'm not so I'm not saying, oh, like Airbnb is terrible. You're not going to make any money. No, I, it worked and and everything I wanted to do, I did. But I got to the end of it, I don't do anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got to a stage where even though you were making quite a bit more money, it just for you the strategy psychologically and mentally it just wasn't worth it yeah i think i think where i've been doing bigger stuff i think it's it's harder to do this smaller single stuff and because i was doing the messaging i was managing the cleaner i was doing all of that sort of stuff and then when you're then doing bigger projects on here you're like well I'm doing a lot of work for a little bit of money where i'm actually not doing that much work for a lot more money and it's like mm, and you just you find that balance but like I said, if if you've got if you want to go down this, if you're in a high like tourist location and maybe maybe Airbnb is a better strategy, these are the things to look out for or things probably yeah. we're looking to do. So I tell you, so I've got another boring one, so I won't do that now. I'll save that one for later. <laughs> Let's do a more interesting one. Um so edit your holiday prices immediately. <laughs> so again, so we like being in Eastbourne, it's a tourist trap certain parts of the year so you've got the tennis championship thing that is massive that literally the it's Aegon of, tennis championship isn't it yeah so the whole of Eastbourne just becomes completely full of people that go into this tennis championship and the other one is airborne um yeah find, oh, oh, and just while out. Tom's looking at that the the tennis tournament is basically it's a tournament that's held in Eastbourne with all of the top players that then go on to Wimbledon like a week or two or three later right yeah like so, a pre-Wimbledon tournament yeah 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 it's, it's huge and then and then the other thing is obviously airborne with the planes and all that sort of stuff which again the whole of Eastbourne just shuts down so you've got these two massive tourist bits and there's a couple of other like um holiday type things to keep an eye out for but where where <laughs> so why I say edit your holiday prices immediately is because you need to do it before the first person books <laughs> reason being is that when I very first started I thought well I'll do it relatively cheap to try and get because you need a few reviews to try and get the wheels moving yeah so, so i've <laughs> i've set it out for like 40 pound a night and then at, by the end i was charging like 70 80 pound a night so i've char I've set it up for 40 just to get the wheels moving first booking the whole of the tennis competition oh, no. <laughs> at 40 quid a night when everyone else is charging like 200 250 <laughs> Oh, that's savage. And I was going to say, I was about to say, like, that tennis tournament, you could legit charge anywhere in East Point. Anywhere, any money, anything. And, and where you I You gave was, it away at 40 quid a night. Yeah. <laughs> so when I say edit your holiday prices immediately... Do As it before, before you go live. Before you go live, look at all of the all of the tourist spots, all of the hot spots. Why is it going to be busy in these weeks? And set your prices accordingly, yeah. immediately. Yeah. <laughs> because I think so like, what I then didn't want to do is I didn't want to cancel it. 
They didn't want to be the yeah. sort of Airbnb host that was like, well, actually, I can make a little bit more money off of someone else. I'll count that. A lot more money, mate. A lot more a money. Lot more money. <laughs> a bit of a silver lining is obviously the, to- the tennis tournament didn't go ahead because of COVID. So it didn't actually lose any money. Like it, they cancelled it, like, like yeah. we're fortunately. But yeah, um, but yeah that, that, so, so going from a boring one to a more entertaining one is make sure you do it. The first thing you do is set set your holiday prices because it that is do you know what that is that's an absolute gem that yeah (laughs) wherever you are in the country and it's not something that i would think of doing so wherever you are in the country find out when your you know your big holiday dates are in your town your big events concerts if you live somewhere you know i don't know like manchester or liverpool and you've got like concerts i remember i went to an ed sheeran concert in manchester and prices to stay anywhere that weekend were through the roof are there any types of competitions or tournaments held so for instance um i've been involved in martial arts before and we have a tournament in the same place every year for about i don't know the past 20 years and you you end up with i don't know 900 competitors uh descending on that town or that city for the weekend four days plus all their families so that's that's probably three or four thousand people um, children, adults, mums, dads, grandpas, all of that sort of stuff. And they've got to have somewhere to stay. So yeah, look through the calendar, definitely pick those dates. And then actually I'd take it one step further is when you're trying to figure out the prices for those dates, look at other Airbnbs in the area on those dates. Cause time. if they're already up and running, they'll be ahead of the game and they'll have already done that. And then you'll save yourself the heartache of <laughs> giving your Airbnb away at one fifth of the price <laughs> uh, that it should be like Tom did. But you know that's I, I really like that tip. I think that's that's definitely the best tip so far because yeah. and, and and while we're on that as well, so Airbnb does a thing called smart pricing. So they will put your place out for it. They'll it's almost like a bidding system. So if you click smart pricing, you can set a, a cap and a collar. So how low you prefer to go and how high you think it's worth. And then what Airbnb will do is when it's busy, it will show people higher prices. And then when it's less busy, it will show them less prices. So I did that for a while. If I'm honest, I didn't really get more of the higher stuff i got a lot more of the lower stuff so i change it to a fixed price and yep. and that seemed to just work just as well so it might work well for some people the airbnb smart pricing but it didn't work particularly well for me i've sort of found my niche at my number and i kept sort of trying to creep it up and it and it worked um, yeah but but yeah so rather than relying on airbnb to do the holiday because in my head i was thinking with this smart pricing airbnb will know that in airborne it's going to be through the roof so therefore they're going to price accordingly or the tennis competition or whatever but they don't they, they they'll do it based on how many people are viewing at the time and it yeah and, and i got caught short on that one so, so there's that one and then and then the next one i'll do is just below that one is a three night minimum so when i first started i was doing one night again to get the wheels moving and then a two night and then i've got myself up to a three night and the reason being is the the effort that it takes to do the what do you call it the the arrival, cleaning the cleaning, and- the exit, and all that sort of stuff for one night. So let's say, we'll do the numbers. So let's say I was charging, and so I, like, we'll go with the early days before I did three night minimum. Let's say I was charging sixty pound a night. So I got paid a cleaner twenty thirty quid. I paid. I've earned sixty quid for the night, but then I've done a load of work to get them set up. The risk, obviously, if something goes wrong in that time, message in to and fro. And then I've and then and then at the time I had a twenty pound cleaning fee and I've got another thing of that in a second. So what am I making there? I don't know, like 80, 60 quid, seventy quid profit. Then obviously I've got my mortgage and blah 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 blah. So once you actually whittle it down, let's say that I've earned fifty quid. It's a lot of work for fifty quid. And and if something went wrong, one review that's negative. Like for, unfortunately, I didn't get any. But let's say we got one negative review on that one one nighter. You've earned fifty quid and it's all gone belly up so yeah. so quickly learned that one nights was just not enough so two, so I went to two nights thinking that maybe people would do weekends and then i thought to myself well actually if people are doing two nights would would i be able to get away with three nights because all of a sudden then i'm at my minimum i'm now earning a minimum profit per night or per booking that's now balancing it out and people do and then i, I looked into getting a company to come in because you get these companies that will manage the airbnbs for you they're relatively expensive as you can imagine but you can offload pretty much every all of the tips and stuff I'm giving you now. You pretty much offload that onto this company, um, but they they had a free night minimum. So so I was like, oh that's interesting. So even 
that that was recognized by an outsider because when i said oh i want to only do three nights so we only do three nights as well so i'd recommend that i'd say get yourself to a three night minimum just because you don't want to be dealing with loads and you'd rather so we talk when we talk about mortgages you'd rather deal with one person that's going to earn you loads of money than 20 people that are going to earn you little bits of money yeah same yeah. same same sort of one one process. bridging case rather than five regular mortgage cases exactly that yeah because it's you know it's, it's time yeah you know? yeah you yeah know, get that so would you say would you say that when you switched from one to two and two to three nights did the amount of days that you were booked per month go down did nope. it kind of balance out fairly evenly if anything it probably made more because the weeks would fill up do you know the weeks would fill up better so <laughs> so let's say that i have one night and you can change it so you can do like weekends no check-ins on a sunday da, 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 da. but let's say you did a one night and your one night books on a saturday well now no one can't book a long weekend yeah because you, you've you you they pigeon no one's booking a one night on a wednesday do you know what i mean that, that yeah. doesn't tend to happen people are booking a one night or a two night on a weekend and it burns it so the so my thought is weekends are your busiest you pretty much can get booked up every single weekend so let's try and get them to do three so nights. So they're either going to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Exactly. They're going to get the whole weekend in that bucket. Rather than Saturday, Sunday, or just yeah. Saturday. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> you're because you're now booking out that whole weekend, you then might get someone that books the next week, and then the, the diary feels better on a free night minimum. Cool. And then also you've got one cleaning fee at the end of it. Exactly. Rather that. than three sets of cleaning fees for yeah. one-nighters. Yeah, exactly that. So Which yeah, every, so I think that's what, a good one. What, what made you switch to that? Or just put the getting, idea when you're just getting get annoyed. Place. Really? <laughs> just it was literally like, you just getting annoyed so at doing many, it again yeah. and again. And now after you do a couple of one nighters and you earn no money and the aggro that comes with dealing with it and, and setting it all up and stuff, and you're just like, oh, no, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. And then you went to two nights. And then I thought the, the two the, the two night to three night was more me seeing if I could get away with it. It was me thinking to myself, like these weekends and booking a Saturday and Sunday, could I squeeze in a Friday or a Monday? And it just worked. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah. So I mean, I think, I think again, that would depend on the type of client that you're, you're attracting. I know for me again, um, time ease convenience is important to me. So if I was staying somewhere and I was only going for two nights, but I had to pay for three, if it worked, I'd probably still do it. Yep. Um, I would as well. I, th know. I think probably a lot of people would look at it as, and then, because, like you said, like, when you look at the photos, you'll see it, it was really, it was a nice place. It was interior it was, yeah. designed well. I think people probably fell in love with the spot. They probably, oh, I want to stay there. And yeah. then and then it's like, okay, if you're if it's really dated and all that, people probably go, oh, well, I'll skip that one. But it was enough about the property that people would go, actually, I want to stay there. Maybe I'll push it an extra night. I would say as well, like I, when I was thinking about Airbnb for some of the stuff that I've got around here, I looked on Airbnb at what was available. And here, the, the there's not that much available anyway. But even the stuff that is, it is dated. It's very kind of just someone's home. There's no design <clears throat> or thought about it. Uh, and and so without blowing smoke up your ass, you're like having seen yours. Yours was definitely the most designer, nicest yeah. upmarket, like the type of cool Airbnb you find in Brighton or something. It's, it's yeah. like the only one. No, I appreciate that, mate. Now, that, and that was the idea is when I did the research as well, I was like everything, all the Airbnbs in Eastbourne look like what you would think an Eastbourne place would look like. So if you're not from Eastbourne and you've got this impression of this old town where everyone's fuddy place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, the Airbnbs are very of that ilk. And, mm -hmm. and it's not like Eastbourne isn't like that, to be fair. I think Eastbourne's quite a young scene now. There's some good food places. Like the beach is amazing. The beach is actually nicer than Brighton Beach and train links are amazing. So there is this young culture, but there is no one sort of satisfying that. So in Airbnb, most of my guests were sort of between the ages of sort of like 25 and maybe 45. It's mm -hmm. probably like the, the, the sweet spot, but they don't want to be staying in like granny annexes. They want to be staying in places that they would expect in Brighton and London. So anyone that's out there that is thinking about doing Airbnb, Eastbourne is a good is a good buy. I'd say like I'm not giving you investment advice, but I'm saying it, 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 Eastbourne is a good buy for Airbnb because of what Robin said. There is like there isn't a lot of competition if you're going to do it well. And, or even for rent to rent, I'd say yeah, if you can rent to rent at the right price, yeah, 
you know. Because there'll be a lot of landlords in, and there's a, there's a fair few decent sized landlords in Eastbourne as well, aren't there? They've got a fair amount under their belt that might let off a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, like I said, I, <laughs> talking to you has put me off doing everything <laughs> for myself anyway, even more than the decision I'd made for myself before yeah. this conversation. Um, but yeah, if there was someone out there like that company you're talking about that, that does it for you, they, it's, they, they, it's they, something I would consider. And with that, they there isn't one in Eastbourne. So again, yeah, uh, for, yeah. for, for another business idea is if you wanted to do that, but there's you can probably go and clean up in Eastbourne and, and offer them that sort of service. Well, see, as it, I'll, I'll rephrase that. The company that I wanted to use don't aren't in Eastbourne. I couldn't find one specifically for Eastbourne. So there is a there's a gap there. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a gap in the market if you can offer um, Airbnb management. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I, was... I think to- Toby at Premier, um, I can't think what he's, I think it's, it's a Premier Let's in Seaford. He does something similar because we've had him on the show before. I think he would cover to Eastbourne, but it's not really sort of as far as he usually goes. But if yeah. you if you needed someone immediately, Toby can do it. Um, yeah. But if someone wanted to set something up specifically for Eastbourne, I think there's a bit of a gap there. But we are talking, yeah. I looked at this about a year ago, so I don't know over, over the last year someone else has come in. But but again, I mean, obviously, not much has happened in the last year. Networking true. events and property meetings and stuff, kind of all yeah. online. And I, yeah. I don't really, I, I like to get face to face with people if I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, but when I was looking into it before, you know, a year, eighteen months ago, there there wasn't anyone management wise with experience that I'd have been happy to to yeah. kind of give my properties to. And so it's why I haven't done it because I don't want to do it myself. And again, and again, I, I, I'd hazard a guess. So anyone listening that lives in a relatively large town or near a large town that isn't a city, there's probably a gap for that. So especially if you're in the touristy areas, but that it's sort of like an underlooked thing is some of these companies that do these Airbnb management there, they tend to be in the city. So the company that I wanted to work with were one in Brighton, uh, London and blah, blah, blah. They're all over the country, but they don't Mm. do one in Eastbourne. So I'd imagine some of these larger towns probably, Again, if you, this is sort of something that you're thinking, actually, I'd like to do this, but then how do I make a bigger living out of it? Is you can run your own and run other people's at the same time. Then all of a sudden, if you're running other people's, then your cleaner can do more than just your house. You can do a couple of others. There's a whole business plan there that relatively easy to flick into, I would have thought. So when we're talking about these en- entry strategies, that's probably a good entry level. Um, I can imagine a lot of people would trust people to organize that side of things because it is really... It's, as much as it's hard work in the fact that it doesn't switch off is the actual workload isn't particularly complex. Do you know what I mean? You're not solving massive problems and you're not sending someone to space. You're literally just talking to someone on your phone and making sure they turn <laughs> up. <laughs> you, know, like, you can do it. So is it, yeah. it, if you're thinking about how do I set up a business in property, <laughs> this is probably another one to have a little think about. Um, right. Let's go on to a boring one because I've given you two good ones. <laughs> so boring ones, tea and coffee. Again, basic everyone should know that tea and coffee um i didn't have a coffee machine but i was just a kettle and, and bits of not a massive hot drink drinking myself but that goes a long way a lot of people will message about teas and coffees again it's on it's on the advert but you still got people messaging about it and what i would do is i'd buy the um what you call it the capsule thing do you know like when you go to like a cafe type and they just give you the little sachet things that you just pour in Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, you got to, if you start thinking a bit like a hotel, is that you want to store this stuff? You want it to. You don't want to put loads out in case someone nicks a load. So you want to have sort of like a. You can drip feed it in. So again, when you go yeah. into like a normal hotel and you get the little sachets and stuff, so I went. So I guess I guess with like restocking milk and teas and coffees, they were stored in a cupboard somewhere, and the cleaner was that part of the cleaning routine. The cleaner yeah. would restock everything exactly that for people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, when I very first started, so when I was doing some of the cleans myself. What I would do is I would buy some treats. So I did this early on, and this actually made a massive difference in reviews and stuff, is I would buy, like again, like a, a small loaf of bread, um, some butter, uh, eggs, milk, and then like a, like a bag of chocolate, like Maltesers or something. Just, you know, something to, to get. And, and I also, i tell you what, I'm trying to think now. Thornton's, I'm pretty sure it's Thornton's, did like a little mini bottle of champagne and some chocolates. And so I was buying them and popping them in there. And then yeah. I probably, again, I'm spending maybe five, six quid on all these little bits, but it made a big difference. When the cleaner took over, I'd, I'd, I 
you know, it was such a pain in the ass dealing with her. I didn't even ask her to do it. <laughs> but I got I got all the good reviews by that point that the, the snowball effects yeah. happened. But if you want to take it seriously and and it's like a business plan that you wanted to really push forward with, those little bits make a massive difference. Little yeah. thing of jack and, cakes or whatever. And just to kind of jump in and reiterate, obviously I'm not experienced in Airbnb or service accommodation. I don't have any. I've never done it. I've looked into it and decided not to take it any further. Tom has done it, but on a on a single unit basis. And this is just his experience that he's passing on to you guys that might be doing it already or might be thinking about doing it. Yeah, There's probably people with, listening going, you're doing this all wrong. Yeah, <laughs> the reason yeah, you didn't yeah, like yeah. it is because you did it all right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not trying to put you off doing it. We're, no, we're not bringing all, no, no, Tom's no. experience. And I think actually what would be really good to balance it out would be, as I said, to bring on someone that's not only done it at scale um, compared to a single unit, but actually someone that does really love doing it and why they love doing it rather than why Tom didn't love doing it. And yeah. I think that'd be quite a good episode as well. Yeah. So for those of you listening, if you know anyone, I've got a few people in mind that I know, um, but if you know anyone, please let us know. Yeah, we'll, we'll look to invite them on. Right, so we've, got, oh. we've only got two more left until we get to our new bonus two. Go for it. So... Uh, Again, relatively obvious, but I think this one needs addressing because most people don't do this is how important the lifestyle photos are. You know, the amount of people that just take basic, basic dark photos on Airbnb and it like it's mind blowing. Like think about it, the marketing side of things. Like you're gonna you wanna catch someone's eye instantly. So the way the what I've written down here is think Pinterest, think Instagram, think that sort of like interior design magazine style you really want people to buy into the fact that this is going to be a nice place to live and you want i had it in my head you want someone sitting on a sofa going oh look at that and passing their phone to their partner yeah that's that you want to get into that having some dingy flat with a basic bit of furniture and some bits and bobs of gray carpet yeah. <laughs> listen to the previous episode for that joke um but yeah but make it feel like an Instagram profile. And yeah. that's what I did. I think that's what massively helped. And well, people and, are going to book based on those photos. But you're booking solely on what you see. So you've got to buy into the fact that people are, are, are they're buying with their vision on this. You know, they can't walk around it. It's not like doing a view in. They're literally doing it on the things that they see in those pictures. So even like things like I took some photo, or well, it was actually Ems that took the photos because she's amazing and stuff like this, but of the little basket you know like the, the bread and, the, and the, the coffees and bits and bobs and and just, just you know sell that experience what i probably thinking back here what i probably should have done is maybe some some more of like the beach and bits and bobs and, and mm -hmm. sell that but I, I i just did the actual house sale because if you're going to respawn you sort of know what what you're buying but you probably can go into a little bit more of that um uh and then i've also written down here about having a feature so we talked briefly about the bathroom so the bathroom was by far the best room in the house spent a lot of time and energy in the bathroom so if i try and paint a picture in your visual mind so you so stand you're standing at the door immediately at your left is a relatively large double shower with a rain thing above black frame white hexagon tiles um normal sort of uh what do you call it uh what's the parquet flooring style um vinyl floor then to your right, you've got a white sink, black tap, black mirror. But then in front of you, you've got this massive bath. And you've got the biggest bath that you could buy. And then behind that is this really nice tropical wallpaper. So standing at the door, you can see everything, but it's all really well put together in regards to black, tropical, big white features. But, but what the first picture of my Airbnb profile was the bath. And it, the, the headline was um, stylish pad by the sea with oversized bath, you know, and, and the idea is to sell that vision of I'm going away and I'm going to get to get lie in this massive bath, have a bubble bath, part, like you could probably fit about three people in. I'm not, not, not saying I ever, I've ever achieved three. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> but, <laughs> I hope your other half doesn't listen to this podcast. She doesn't. <laughs> But yeah, but but you could fit three people in that bathtub if you wanted to. Um, but but yeah, so but the reason I mentioned that is is this whole feature thing is is your first picture 
is the one that people are going to look at, look at and you want to catch someone's or attention. make them go through to the next pictures exactly. right exactly and and you've got to think like this like just having a picture of a of a boring bedroom or a boring lounge isn't going to do it you need to sell that sort of lifestyle people need to go wow I love the look of that. Let's have a look at the rest of it. And that bathroom was the one that I just figured when people are going away, they're going away to relax. Do you know I mean? They want to feel like they're going away. And, and I, I thought the bath was the winner there. Mm-hmm. Cool. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, yeah. So I was going to say like it had that very kind of um, modern, sleek, chic kind of feel to it. Like you said, the, the white tiling with the black framed handles and shower screens and stuff like that like you would see all over instagram or kind of these design um profiles and stuff like that so it was very very cool yeah 100 percent. cool right and then the last one and then we're going to the bonus ones which everyone's been waiting for <laughs> is uh, charge more than you think you can you probably get away with it so when i very first started like i mentioned we started at like 40 pound a night just to try and get the wheels moving then went up to 50 quid a night and sat at 50 quid for a while because i thought that was about right by the end of it, I was doing £70 a night, which for a small two-bed house in that sort of area, again, where I've earned that 2200 in that one month, that was because sort of charging more and more and more. Um, keep experimenting with the pricing. Don't just sort of settle yourself and say, well, that's about right. Is try a couple of weeks and push it and then see if you get anything. Because it's so easy to change, you know, and you just yeah. flick it around. So, so if you've got a, a week or two weeks, like there's a gap, just chuck the price up and see if you get away with it. But but I, I just kept creeping it up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and was still getting bookings. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, if you keep getting bookings, keep putting the price up. You keep pushing, yeah, supply and demand. And I think, like we said, like where it was probably one of the nicer Airbnbs in Eastbourne, I could get away with pushing it higher. But mm-hmm. but if you're going to go down that route is, I, I think I did it the right way, that whole start a bit lower to try and get the reviews. And then once you've got, once I've hit the super host status and, You've got all the really like positive reviews. You've got like just shy, I think it's like four point nine percent like of stars or whatever it stars, is. Stars, yeah. Um, then you can get away with charging more and more and more and just keep pushing it. If I if I would still own it now, I would I would still be trying to squeeze a little bit more out of it. And I'd- I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and say um, a tip of my own, but this is not from running an Airbnb. This is from being a guest. I have everything is now right. Fast food fast internet, fast everything, okay? And I would say communication is is huge. Now, I'm not talking about the communication in terms of going backwards and forwards with the host. I'm talking about communication in terms of the speed of your response when someone does a first initial inquiry. So when I'm looking at Airbnb, if I'm going away for business or, uh, I don't know, on a holiday or, or whatever, I look at the Airbnbs and I'll, I'll pick like the three or four that I like the look of best. And I'll message the host on each one because inevitably a lot of them are checking at like three or 4 PM. And that's quite late. I like to check in at like midday or one or two. Right. So I will message each and say, Hey, uh, is there any chance if it's a 4 PM? Hey, is there any chance I can check in at two? And the first one that comes back to, cause I know I like all of them. So inevitably, usually I like to just get stuff done. And the yeah. first one that comes back to me and says, Hey, uh, yeah, we can check you in at two, no problem. Or two thirty or three. If it's like, yeah, that'll do. And then they always do that um, complete booking and they can invite you to complete yeah, booking yeah, yeah. there and then. And that's so easy. It's like, yeah, I can check in at two, done. And sometimes, you know, like a day later or five hours later, one of the other hosts gets back and says, oh, yeah, you know, we could check you in. It's too late by then. I've booked. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. You know, yeah, so- that, that, again, I was always really hot on that. So I was, again, one of the things that pops up time and time again in the reviews was how good the communication was, how quick it was. Because I completely agree with you. Is you just got to be on it. That you got to look at it as like a business. They are your customers at the end of the day, and they're going to expect a certain level of service from you. And and it is easy to get lazy with it because you could leave it another couple of hours and go and do something, but just yeah. get it done. And then yeah. and the thing is, once you send the first message, you can get away with the next message being a little bit later. But just make sure you're really hot on those first parts of those communication. Um, yeah. Because because a lot of people value, like I said, people value it, value it yeah. a lot. So yeah, so I, I completely agree with you that one. Um, but we're finished with the list. So do you want some bonus ones? I'd love some bonus ones. So the first bonus one, we'll go we'll go with the baseball bat one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the first guest on my first night. So I'm already like not nervous, but I'm like, oh, I hope it all goes well and all that sort of stuff. 
<laughs> and, and talking about communication. So my phone does a thing when like at night it goes on um, like a sleep mode sort of thing. So it, so people can't text me in all the like airplane mode type yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, but if you ring a few times, it will come through because it'll be like, obviously it's important. So yeah. this guy's rung a few times and I'm downstairs eating dinner or whatever. And I've come upstairs and, and I've looked at my phone. I've got all these, I'm like, oh my God, I've not heard like that. So I've rung him and he's an Italian guy. And he's like, um, Tom, there's a man outside and he's banging the door with a baseball bat. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, he's like, he's like threatening. He's outside and he's, he's bashing, he's trying to bash the front door down with a baseball bat. And I'm like, are you all right? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm here with a knife and I'm ready. Like, if like, that's up. I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, here with a knife. Genuinely, first night, first guest. Some lunatic smashed the front, and this is a really what? quiet, what? nice area. I'm still to this day, have no idea. But the, where where the tip comes in is what I did. I got in my car. I just drove straight there, and and not with your own door. baseball bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, to be fair, I did have one in the car. I was ready. <laughs> and then I've got I got into the house and I've calmed down. I've had a good conversation with him and stuff. And he's like, yeah, no, he goes, I don't know. He's like. Just this guy just comes up and just starts banging the door with a baseball bat. Was your guest from way out of town or something? Yeah, or? he's from Italy. He's moved. He's from Italy and he's moved to. The, the, uh, so it's him, his wife, and his baby child. And oh this God. is their first night in England, and he's just moved here because he's, he's oh. just taken a job. <laughs> he's gone back now. And, I, and I'm like, this isn't England. <laughs> well, it's parts of England, but this isn't like this is a really quiet, sleepy part yeah. of Eastbourne. It is, yeah. And and to this day, I've got no idea whether someone was trying the to police find me up? or uh, no. I, what did he? He said he rung the police, um, and and they said like obviously let us know if he turns back up. We'll send a. a oh, what did he just scarf her off? Did he or something? Yeah, and, and that was it. But like, like genuinely, you never lived there, did you? I lived there for did a you? really small period of time, just when I was doing like tidying up and stuff. Funny, it's but, so funny. Yeah. Like genuinely he's trying to smash the door down with a baseball bat. The first night, first guest. But the, but like I said, the tip there was because I got in my car and I drove straight there and I made sure they were all right and I had a uh, and then a, the next day I brought some beers around and all that sort of stuff. They still left five stars and was really happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> but but if I would have like the just the fact that you got five stars after that is incredible. I know. And but I was like, oh, honestly, I felt so bad. Like this poor man's just like got his whole family in this house that he doesn't know and his country doesn't know. And some lunatics like smashing the door. There. To this day, he got absolutely no idea. I I think that's I literally t- insane. I, t- I tell I tell another little anecdote is what I think it might be is I actually saw when I did live there a police raid on the house opposite and down one. Oh, okay. So obviously some naughty stuff was going on in that house. Again, we're talking, this is a really quiet area. It's not like, I'm not talking about like, this is all so out of character that makes it funny. But these are two really weird things. But yeah, there was a police raid. And I reckon what's happened is someone's got the house confused and he's probably gone round to that house to have a word, like a little like little time later, because obviously whatever's going on. But then he's banged on this door or he's banged on a couple of doors or whatever. Oh. But yeah, so there's that one. So 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 the lesson learned there is to just be there, be a be like communication, drive there face to face, deal with deal with the solution rather than just because because what I could have done and said, well, let me know if he knocks again or or whatever, yeah. and just and just swept it under the rug. Because there's no, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna have a big fight when it's some lunatic with a baseball bat. There's not a lot I can really do, but the fact it got in the car and it meant the world to him and his family. Just yeah, of course it is yeah, hundred percent. So that's the first bonus. Now the second one, just the one that come in my head. So something else that went horrifically wrong while I, and I was actually away, so I couldn't go and deal with this one face to face. Was the, <laughs> the the person rang me up and he said, "Tom, I'm really sorry, but there's shit everywhere in the garden." And I went, "Sorry," and he went, "Yeah, like the garden is just covered in shit because the the soil pipes burst." I'm like, oh. I'm like what? <laughs> and what happened? is for some reason the soil pipe had got blocked and built up built up and it was seeping out oh. and, it, and then it just went and then and then they sent me this picture and, and i'd swear to god it was the garden was covered that's a, that's another picture you can add to the facebook so I'm not adding that one to the facebook. Like, if you want that one <laughs> then if you want that one then send me an email and I'll send, it, I'll send it to you but i'm not putting that one up there but yeah oh. but, but yeah so and again their first night I'm oh, I'm no. like I'm in Cotswolds in the van and and there's shit everywhere in the garden. Oh, no. Fortunately, I know, and again, and awkwardly actually, 
it was the week the weekend before I was going to, because I changed it. It was just like a, like a concrete garden. I put fake grass down in the garden to make it a bit nicer in the summer. And this guest had moved their book in to, uh, to that weekend or that week or whatever. And I said, oh, unfortunately, I've got the garden the, the garden people coming in to do the, the grass. Are you okay to let them in and let them out? And they're like, yeah, no, that's fine. So they were really accommodating letting these people in. So, and he said that, so they're already like a bit like fragile because I've obviously asked a bit of a favor and moved them around and stuff. And then luckily... This but this burst pipe happened before the grass. The grass, oh, that would have been I was, again. I spent like over a grand on this grass. Like imagine, imagine it happening <laughs> a couple of days later, and that's all gone. You know, if I'm going to start that one again. But um, but again, the, and then what I've done is I then had to ring around and find an emergency blockage plumber to come and fix it, repair the yeah. saw pipe. But just again, just did it all absolutely immediately, whatever it cost. Just like, look, just get it done. It is so important. I, I just begged this guy on the phone. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm miles away. And fortunately, the Airbnb guest was like, so lovely. They just dealt yeah. with it all. Like, the person come, sorted it. But the fact, again, it was just done straight away. There wasn't any, oh, I'm away. I'll come back and deal with it when I'm back. Yeah. But honestly, like, when I say shit everywhere, I mean, like, everywhere. Like, it went. That's really, really good. And, and apparently, really, it absolutely really grim. stunk, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh God, my hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. And it's just so, like, oh. so there you go. So we've gone Ugh. from from people like to bake to <laughs> shit everywhere in the garden. Oh, but 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 the learning in that is if you're gonna do this in whatever area it is, I would and, and I mean as a landlord you would have this anyway and you'd build them up over time. But I'd say as a as a an Airbnb kind of um, host, do the same thing: is have a contact list of tradespeople that you can call yeah. upon when stuff like this goes wrong. So electrician, plumber, drain blockage guy. So I've got the number for a drain blockage guy yeah. in Eastbourne, right, where I am, because one of my places has a bit of a dodgy main drain yeah. rather than calling out, you know, Southern Water or whatever. It's just easier for me to pay 30 quid and get it done immediately. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that is is the best thing to do. So every six months I'll pay him, he'll come along and he'll sort that out. And then I, you know, I don't have the same issue of, of, of stuff flooding. But if you've got those contact lists and I'd have, I'd have multiple people. So I've got my, my main guys that I have for everything. Um, and I use them for, for everything. But, you know, there's going to be a time where one of them's away. So yeah. I might need to, to call another electrician or another. But yeah, I think that, yeah, like you said, the lesson there is be prepared. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> Stuff anything, is going to go wrong and it can go wrong anything. pretty horrifically. So you yeah. think like I've only had I only had that Airbnb for what twelve months, or pretty much the whole of twenty twenty, and maybe a little bit before. Yeah, and and a fair amount happened in that. And again, that wasn't a full year because a lot of those weeks I couldn't even do anything. Because um, of the lockdown. Yeah, Airbnb locked the lockdown, like yeah. they stopped bookings and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so there, there, there's the there's the list and the bonuses. But what I think we'll do, obviously, we'll post this on Facebook and um, uh, Instagram. <laughs> But if you're on either of those and you follow us or if you don't go and hunt us down, add some, you know, like put in the comment section of the post of like some lessons that you've learned or some, yeah, or some funny things that have happened. Like, have you ever had shit pour out into the garden? Have you ever had a madman with a baseball bat trying to attack your first yeah. guest? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be really cool, cool yeah. Other people's, other other people's other people's stories, stories and tips and stuff from Airbnb. Yeah, cool. wicked. Well, thank you very much for being our guest today. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that better guests are on their way <laughs> with more with more entertaining lives and stories. But now, I hopefully that was useful for some people. But again, just the, the shameless plug. Um, follow us at Podcast Property. Remember to subscribe, like, review, all of those things. They're really important for us. And and yeah, get in touch and and, and let us know your your Airbnb horror stories or lessons that you've learned on the social medias. Um, but yeah, that's a goodbye from me. Yeah, and a goodbye from me. And until next time, uh, see you soon. See you later. <laughs>Thank you for listening to the Property Investors Podcast. The information contained in the podcast is not to be used as financial advice. Everybody's situations and goals are different and you should always complete your own due diligence on investments and seek personalised financial advice from a qualified person. Feel free to contact the show for professional recommendations. Visit propertyinvestorspodcast.com.